Huh. Something wrong, sir? I don't know, David. Just something about that planet didn't feel right. Okay, it's Christmas time, and I want to spend my holiday eating Chinese food and watching as many Christmas episodes as possible. Plus, it's been a while since I've done South Park. I need an easy video. Well, have we got a show for you. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about South Park, or more specifically, Randy Marsh. Now, South Park, in many ways, is guilty of the same cliches that most other adult cartoons are in infamous for. Idiot father, neurotic suffering mother, crapsack world that focuses on a whole town, ensemble cast of characters, etc. The only difference is, one, they were partially the reason for it, and 98% of the time, these characters are entertaining, have charm, or just somehow work. I mean, look at Randy and his many, many hobbies. This dude goes through phases at the rate I go through underwear. But that's not to say Randy is a total Sane. He's usually just funny. In later seasons, he becomes a character whose popularity was firmly split down the middle, in no part thanks to Tegrity Farms. But because I already talked about that, like, months ago, I think. I figured, what other bad stuff has Randy done? Heck, overall, what's the worst thing he's ever done? Well, let's discuss. It's Pinewood Derby. Nothing else, it's just Pinewood Derby. I know you might disagree, so... Alright, that's 2.8 centimeters. Should give us a drag of only 0.6 milliseconds. Hold the front here, Stan. OMG, I thought the title was an indicative, indicative, one of those two. Makes me grateful I was never in Girl Scouts. They tried to start one in my area when I was little, but I refused to go and my parents didn't want to push me. So no Girl Scouts for Kitty. I did not have to sell cookies to a coffee teen, her stripy ghost man friend, and a bunch of his clones. Randy and Stan are participating in the Pinewood Derby competition, hosted by the Boy Scouts, which I have no idea what that is. Pinewood Derby, not the Boy Scouts. I know what they are. James Dale is from Jersey and he went to Rockers. I went to Rockers. Sorry. Again, point is, I don't know what Pinewood Derby is meant to be because I never did scout crap. But from what I can gather, it seems like you have to build your own model car and let it slide down a hill, Hot Wheels style. Whichever car goes the farthest in the quickest amount of time is the winner. The catch is you can only build the car out of parts in the approved kit. If you alter it in some way, you get disqualified. Randy, for his part, forces Stan to stay up until 2 a.m. to build it as a bonding activity. Even though, as we know from How I Met Your Mother, nothing good happens after 2 a.m. Sharon, Stan's Pinewood Derby race is tomorrow! Do you have any idea how important this is to him? Randy, why do you remind me of my uncle? Is it bad he reminds me of Randy? What's worse is Randy is one of those fathers who ties all of his self-worth into his son beating other sons and their equally emotionally insecure fathers. But to Stan, it's just a game. And a boring one at that. Well, it's just a block of wood and some wheels. I don't think there's that much more you can do with it. That's because you're a chick! Now just leave us alone! Ugh, Stan, be lucky you were born a boy. Imagine if you were a girl. Can you imagine Randy is a pageant father? Good thing Shelly looks like a carpet stain. This time, Stan has to bring honor to his father by defeating the Hollis duo, the son, Emmett, ooh, I wonder if he has a brother named Ingo, and his father, who strangely does not have a name. Well, well, look, son, it's the Marshes. Hey, Hollis. All right, in my infinite naming wisdom, I shall call this diphthong Aaron with two A's. A-A-Ron. Sorry, he just looks like an Aaron to me. This year, to show up to Aaron, Randy has gotten a little something something. Stan, how do you think the Hollises beat us every year? With talent and love, but at the same time, Stan speaking as a former college student and a YouTuber, it's only cheating if you get caught. Wink, wink. There. What is that? Yeah, what is that? It's, uh, it's nothing, really. Fine, forgot I asked. God. As it turns out, Randy added something different to the Pinewood Derby car. It's... Well, let's allow this dude to show it. Tom, I'm standing outside the Hadron Particle Super Collider in Switzerland. Oh, crud. Hadron Collider? Flashbacks. Remember, never let Roger in a Hadron Collider, or even near one. I'm taking my glasses off for this pic. He needs to be watched very closely. And police are now looking for 
Princess Leia Organa of Alderaan. Caught here in these photos, the troubled rebel princess is seen taking the superconducting magnet. Leia, you don't have to wear that dress tonight. Walk these streets for money. You don't care if it's wrong or if it is right or if it's cheating. Guys, I warned you, it's only cheating if you get caught. And you got caught. Awful. But we don't have time for me to lecture y'all. Right now, we need to get you the event we have been waiting for all video. The Pinewood Derby match. Now, a recurring episode idea in South Park is that, as a child, you don't really worry about competitions. Sure, you might like winning, I know I did, but 98% of the time, you just care about having fun. It doesn't matter if you lose, because you at least got to spend time with your parents. Too bad that in South Park, parents take special, unhealthy interests in their children's extracurricular activities, especially the fathers. Like with baseball, the kids find it boring, after all, it's like four hours long, and Stan is ready to quit until he hears his father wistfully talking about his upcoming game. Can you believe it, Stan? The state championship game. It's the greatest thing ever. Damn it. In Stanley's Cup, a peewee hockey game is as intense as a greaser rumble. It even has the power to give a terminally ill cancer boy the hope he needs to overcome his illness or kill him. No hope. No hope. Poor little guy tying all of his self-worth into this. Here we get Pinewood Derby, and what should be a fun event is instead a pissing contest. But once again, before we get to that, sorry y'all, Randy and Stan must present the vehicle to the Scoutmaster for inspection. And Randy must teach his son a valuable lesson about lying. When you tell them you only use the approved kit, don't look up and away, don't rub your neck, and don't touch your ear. Otherwise, they'll know you're lying to them. Keep this in mind. You have to learn how to lie correctly someday. Might as well be today, all right? I love you, son. But Randy, you should have told me about this when I was little. I was an awful liar, and I wanted to achieve my ultimate destiny dream of being evil. Dan successfully lies, highly reluctantly, but he is believed, and it seems as though he will be competing against the Hollis boy. Clocked her in at home at 1.5 seconds. It's the fastest car we've ever built. 1.5? I... I don't know what that means. Is that good? Stan and that one kid who doesn't matter and whose name I actually kind of forgot <laughs> are competing. And... Yeah, so Stan wins, but I'm sure Aaron will be fine with... He's okay! He's okay! He's okay! He's okay! He's okay! It is said that he is still standing there like a robot repeating, He's okay! He's okay! He's okay! He's okay! To this very day. Obviously, he doesn't have a loving mother like Sharon. Randy, and yes, I say Randy because this was all about him, I hope your win was worth it. And Stan, I hope you use that trophy as a paperweight. For the sake of this video, I just want to keep a ranking of all of the bad things Randy has done in this episode, just so we are aware. All right, where are we at? Ugh. Well, in a way, it seems to have been worth it. The Pinewood Derby car has broken all of the laws of physics and created FTL, meaning faster than light travel. Something that is viewed as currently impossible, but absolutely necessary if we want to get out of the solar system and explore our interstellar neighborhood. Huh, you know what? Randy, I know a father had to commit unalive to make this happen, but at least some good came out of your cheating. Do you know what this means? means you did what Elon Musk couldn't. Stan Marsh? Yeah? I'm Agent Clark and this is Agent Marks. Obviously, ugh, they're a secret government organization. They're not gonna keep your secret. Ah, crap, Dad!
Young man, what we're about to tell you is a matter of national security. I like how Stan was so annoyed at this because of how often he's dealt with Randy. To him, it's like Randy ticked off that nosy neighbor that tells you the bottles go in the blue bin one time too many. As it turns out, the car was spotted by an alien and he's now traveling to Earth, potentially to allow Earth to encounter the Galactic Federation of Planets. We believe that they intend to welcome us into the Galactic Federation of Planets. They will want to meet the people who discovered warp speed for our species. Ooh, maybe he wants to try spaghetti and pray to kangaroos. Oh, okay, maybe this will be good. Once again, a kid is now an orphan, but hey. At least we'll finally encounter aliens and make great strides in science and progress. I mean, aliens? That's something we still haven't found in the real world. They're hiding on Europa and Enceladus. However, for obvious reasons, Randy doesn't want to tell. Despite the fact that lying to law enforcement is a crime, Catherine added to the list. The whole community gathers in the town square to meet this alleged alien. And since it'll be important later, I just want to say for this occasion, Randy gets his own multi-way burner phone with the various world leaders. I wonder what their group chat must look like. The National France is with you! Good luck with the alien, Mr. Marsh! Please stay her out from China! I'll be honest, I recognize, like, none of these people. Is it a sign that I'm young? Or at least I had no exposure to the news prior to going into high school. The ship arrives and we make contact with First Life. However, it's not squid-looking aliens that talk in ink or the Great Gazoo. It's this guy. I seek the life forms that made this. Oh, he seems nice. Oh, yeah? You're gonna build me another one, see? He's got a gun! Oh, sh- <laughs> The alien in question turns out to be a rogue criminal named, bear with me and don't laugh, Baby Fark McGeezak. And yes, you have to call him Baby Fark McGeezak, not Baby Fark or McGeezak, every single time. He's like John Redcorn, and he sounds like this, right? Like a bad impression of Angel Dust from Hasbun Hotel, say? Like the announcer from Cora, I Like Paige Sinclair. Circus Baby here says that he is on the run from the intergalactic government with a busted warp drive. Maybe all he needs is a crying waffle sticker. Wait, wrong show. Meaning that Randy and Stan must build him one to show he means business. You can't threaten us! <laughs> Screw this guy. He can't take out all of us. <laughs> ah! Ew, dang dude. Fine, they'll build you the damn warp drive. Cool your jets. Come on, Dad. We gotta come clean. Oh. I mean, it's obviously fine to admit the truth when a crazed manic alien with a gun is threatening to kill you and everybody you've ever known. Oh, it happens to the best of us. Randy and Stan attempt to go to work building the warp drive, but keep stalling for time. And for shame. For apparently taking a second too long. Hello? It just blew up our government building! You got to hurry! Stan is feeling the pressure of this, like a claustrophobic child with an abusive daddy who happens to have locked him in the closet for saying the F word. And he wants to come clean. Dad, it's over. We have to tell everyone we cheated. No. I mean, despite the fact I have been riding Randy for this like a donkey, partially for humor, partially because it's me, Yab, I also kind of get it. I do think he should tell the truth, but at the same time, there is a criminal with a gun waving it around like a brand new Gucci purse. If baby Huffington here wasn't being such a baby boomer, I can understand him confessing, but he showed that he meant business. Plus, he's an alien with technology we can only dream of. Even if they disarm him, he could still run into his ship and get something even worse. Or if they come clean, then he could just easily kill everybody, Randy and Stan included, for wasting his time. To me, they should be stalling, at least until either Baby Dinosaur goes away, or they can trap him or kill him or whatever. Then they tell the truth. They get into a lot of trouble, but hey, they probably won't get killed. Luckily, they're saved by the timely intervention of the space cops, who look like Sir Penches had a baby with Mr. Spacely and the godfather was Eric Estrada from Chips. Fella by the name of Baby Fark McGee's axe? Uh, no. We haven't seen anything. 
<gasps> Ooh, Randy, you're touching your ear. I was thinking maybe that was Stan's tell and Randy was just saying, I can tell when you lie, so please don't do any of that. But I kind of feel like Randy does it himself and because Stan is basically his father's child, he probably imparted that habit onto his son. Uh, what did this criminal alien do exactly? He stole over 600 parsons of space cash from the Universal Bank. He's wanted for that? $600 is like nothing nowadays. It's like a plane ticket to Montana. So then, we're the first aliens you've ever seen. That's right, yep, you're the first ones. You don't seem that excited about your first contact with alien life. Well, I mean, what about the Jagon aliens, or the Taco Dude, or Starvin' Marvin in space? Before they leave, the officers give Randy their contact info. I don't need it painted, I just need it functional, right? Hey, the right paint job is a big part of what makes a Pinewood Derby car go fast. Plus, it also makes it look awesome sauce. That's true. Dan is starting to feel nervous, but Randy has a plan. I've got it all figured out, son. You have to kill the alien. Kill the alien? Shh. Yeah, Randy. You cause this. You do it. You like to cosplay as Princess Leia. Don't you have a chain or something with which you can choke him? They invite Boss Baby over to examine the car. And that's when Stan loses his innocence. <laughs> yeah! All right, you got him, son! That sounded wrong. Before they call the space cops, the humans go to examine the ship, and they discover something in there. Remember how earlier we learned that Baby Doll was an intergalactic bank robber who stole what amounts to pocket change, really? Well, it seems those cops either got their info wrong, or $600 is actually a lot in space money. Cause holy heck. Oh my god. Space cash. Looks like those alien cops were right. The humans want to call the cops and return the evidence, but Randy... Or what if we didn't call the cops? Huh? Well, I mean, this is a lot of space cash, guys. Think what we could do with it. <sighs> Catherine, I hope you're still tallying. The humans take the space cash for themselves. And strangely, there's not a lot of infighting. They just separate the cash equally amongst themselves for the world leaders to use for their countries. Well, that's partially a lie. Randy wants to hog it all. Don't think you can keep all the space cash for yourselves. That's right. This is all of our planet. The space cash belongs to all of us. Ooh, Angelo, finally I recognize somebody. It seems like in this time, Randy has become the Heather Regina of the world leaders. Well, more like the Veronica Sawyer. This random geologist dude has them on speed dial and talks about the progress they're making and settling disputes with the others. Too bad the space cops are still around. <sighs> Pesky bugs. And so, did you find the missing space cash? No. Space cash? No. There wasn't any space cash. Randy, stop with all these telltale signs. You are such a hypocrite. Randy and the world leaders lie and say that the space cash wasn't found. They simply killed baby, 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 ooh, and moved on with their lives. Strangely, the officers don't want his body or his ship or stuff like that. That's a little odd. Looks like the alien criminal did land here after all. Oh, that, you were talking about that alien. Oh yeah, that one, he was here, yeah, he landed here, but we, we killed him. At least here, I feel like it would be fine to come clean and say, yeah, he was here, but he friend to kill all of us if we said something, we're sorry we lied. We'll help you in any way we can. But they don't, and just incriminate themselves more and more. It appears that one of your poor countries, Mexico, has built 32 new hospitals and 7 water parks in the last 4 days. Do you have, like, a camera on them or something? What I like is how Randy is actually a pretty crappy liar, despite all the crap he was giving Stan. Either because of the pressure, or because he's just that way in general. I mean, it's easy to tell somebody, just lie, until you actually have to do it. In a way, it's like he's getting a taste of his own medicine, but rather than use it as a chance to reflect, he's just doubling down. And you know how I feel about doubling down. Hey! Hey, Mexico! We said no spinning the space cash yet! What the hell are you doing? 
Will some country that speaks Spanish yell at Mexico, please? They're gonna ruin everything! Alright, maybe this is a good chance to go into controversy. What South Park is best known for? At the time of the episode's airing, the president of Mexico was Felipe Calderon. Calderon? One of those two? Who we see depicted in the episode. Using his chunk of the space cash, he commissioned, among other things, 32 new hospitals and seven water parks, which, OMG, how awful. I guess the water parks might be a little wasteful, but hospitals seem a little necessary and humanitarian. People are always getting sick. How dare a country care about their citizens enough to provide them with health care? For this, he gets chewed out by the space cops and by Randy. Now, as we all know, South Park airs in syndication in countries all over the world, except China and a few others. Originally, the episode was supposed to air on February 8, 2010 on MTV Live in America, almost a year after the American premiere. International airings are weird, but just know that MTV and Comedy Central are owned by the same people, so. They advertised the heck out of this episode, but then, at the last moment, it did not air and was replaced with The Ring. Which, okay, nothing wrong with that episode, insert Jersey comment about Jonas Brothers, but why couldn't the episode air? Well, we got two explanations. The first was that it portrayed the Mexican president in a bad light. At a time when the Mexican Ministry of the Interior wanted the media to have solely positive depictions of Calderon, even if you can argue that the depiction in this episode was still positive. Mexico was the only country that used their share in a positive way that would actually help their citizens. All the other countries used their money on frivolous things. Soccer stadiums, giant robots. The only other country that did something positive was England with their nuclear power plant. Meanwhile, MTV argued that the episode included an image of the Mexican flag and they were afraid of the fan outrage if they were to alter or censor it. Still, fans persisted and on April 4th, 2010, so almost two months later, MTV finally got permission from the interior to air the episode. Uncensored. Matt Stone was later asked about his thoughts on the controversy. And his response was, that's so far away from us. We read about it on the news too, along with everybody else. Which part of me understands. I'd imagine that Matt and Trey have no interaction if an episode airs internationally. It's probably handled by a bunch of other people. Unlike SU, where getting banned internationally contributed to the cancellation, Cell Park is such a big juggernaut that I'd imagine what would be the big whoop. So they're making money, they just might not make as much. And besides, I don't think this controversy is as well known as a lot of others. Heck, I did not even know it existed until I had to write this script. If it was something like the entire show was going to be pulled from airing in Mexico simply because they showed a Mexican flag, I can understand him chiming in, but I get the feeling this happens a lot. Cell Park is not the only show this happens to. Many shows get censored when they air internationally, or certain episodes get skipped when they know there'll be too much to censor. So why would it matter? Still, it felt like a nice thing to discuss. While this is going on, Stan is starting to feel the guilt eat away at him, and Randy is starting to feel the pressure of having all of the world leaders on speed dial and having to lie his butt off. Apparently, he's the most competent out of all of them. So maybe he really is the Veronica. He says they cannot build anything so as to no longer arouse suspicion. But... <sighs> yeah, well, it's not even gonna matter because Finland is thinking about telling the space cops the truth! What? Finland?! Finland? With their fish slapping songs? That's the country for me! We believe the aliens are going to find out sooner or later what we did. It's best we come clean now! Will you just relax, Finland? Of course they would fess up. It's such a Finland thing to do. But I can also see other countries like Sweden or Switzerland doing it. Eh, maybe it was funnier just to pick Finland. Randy and the other world leaders decide to discuss what Finland has said. All right, you guys, we got to get rid of Finland. 
Yeah, we gotta take out a fan and they're gonna squeal. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't say Finland. I, uh, I said England. Sorry for the confusion. It happens at least eight times a week. Anyhow, the rest of the world finally agrees on something as they bomb Finland back into the Stone Age, which of course gets the attention of the space cops. Jeez, do they have anything better to do? Oh, damn it. Favorite Randy moment, hands down. I just love how annoyed he is that other people care he committed mass murder. Again, it's like that nosy neighbor, or he forgot to take the garbage cans inside, or it's street cleaning and his car's on the other side. I don't know. I just, I love this little line so much. Well, we're a little puzzled over one of your countries, uh, Finland. What, what, what about it? Randy, stop rubbing your neck. You're gonna get caught. What? Oh my god, not Finland! Oh, oh no! no! Oh no, no, not Finland! Wait, were they in on this? Yeah, somebody better break the news in Norway. They were really close. Um, I think Sweden is closer to them. It's sandwiched between them. Like that new Taco Bell taco that's just one taco inside of another taco with beans as a glue, rather than allow his father to continue making a fool of himself in front of the entire world. And now, universe, Stan fesses up. Kind of. I use something not in the approved kit. What? Oh, you use something outside God. of the kit? Not in the approved kit? He cheated on the pine with Dabby? Not in the approved kit. Not in the approved kit. Oh my god. Stanley, it makes my heart shatter into glass. I can no longer go on living the way I once did, with my head held high, thinking of the good of everything, simply because this random eight-year-old boy used something not in the approved kit. But at least you told the truth. That's good. You will be a pariah until the end of time, but you will have a squeaky clean conscience. Well, Stan, we're proud of you for coming clean. But it doesn't change the fact that you cheated. Go to your room, son. What? I said at least he had a good conscience. But Randy, low blow. Tally! You should get sent to your room with no Food Network. You can watch any other show, though. Kitty, that might be a little too harsh. I don't care, Catherine. I'm recording this during midnight on Christmas Eve. This video is airing on the 26th of December, meaning, in a way, I have to work on Canadian Boxing Day. But does anybody care? No. They're at the mall returning presents and watching Rocky. Uh, I think we still have the review to do. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. The Space Cops give the people of Earth one last chance to confess. A chance they don't take. And with that confirmation, they tell them, Come on out, sir. It appears to be over. Oh, crud. It's Baby Cham. Wait, I don't think he's called that anymore. Uh, oh, crap. It's Baby Driver. And here comes the twist. My real name is Kevin Zaxor. I am the ambassador to New Planet Testing. Wait, what? These are not space cops. There is no space jail, and space cash is only worth what you as a planet decided it was worth. So, as it turns out, this was all a trolley problem style test to decide whether or not humanity was worthy of joining the intergalactic neighborhood. Eh, at least it's better than the one from Rick and Morty. They presumably at least give you a chance or a choice if you want to join. Whenever a civilization discovers warp speed, we want to bring them into the Federation of Planets. But first, we do the space cash test. Needless to say, you all failed. Now, I have some problems with this, but first off, failing the test results in serious penalties. Since you did not return the space cash, your species and your planet is hereby forever blocked off and barred from the rest of the universe. Goodbye. Well, that sucks. That's an understatement. But sucks it does. I hope the win felt worth it, Randy. <sighs> okay, now I have a few problems with this. I like the twist. In fact, I love the twist. I think it's a great reveal. That's part of why this is my all-time favorite South Park episode. I remember the first time I watched the episode, my jaw dropped. And I was like, <gasps> out loud. But <sighs> I have a few things to say. I like the idea. 
idea of the test, but do you really have the moral high ground to test that these humans were worthy and not up to your standards? You killed people and presumably would have killed more if Stan and Randy were not fast enough. I guess maybe it's to keep up the illusion, but did you really have to kill people? You could have just shot, say, a building or a car or a tree. I think that would be enough. And unlike you, we have no assurance that they came back, which again would be a cool twist. Maybe before he arrived, this dude maybe told a few humans, hey listen, I need to test humanity, could you please help me? I don't know, that would have been cool. But even if you take away the fact that the space cache has no value to us, I still feel like it would make sense we wouldn't want to give it back, at least at first. We have no idea where it came from, we would obviously want to study it, maybe if they told the aliens that, rather than keeping mum, they could have passed, as the reason we kept the money would be altruistic. I just feel like this punishment might have been a little too severe, but hey, maybe they could try again in a hundred years or something like that. Regardless, going back to this video's title, what's the worst thing Randy ever did? This entire episode, I tried to pick one individual moment, like maybe the Pinewood Derby car because it set off this whole mess, or nuking Finland, but the reason I chose this one episode is because overall, it contains some of the worst crap he's ever done. Alright, we have a list. He forces Stan to stay up until 2am to make a car. And rather than recognize it for what it's meant to be, he just tries to live through Stan. He steals from a Hadron Collider. He forces Stan to lie. He cheats. He humiliates a father so badly that he unalives himself in front of his son. He continues the lie, this time to the government and other world leaders. When another country refused to keep up the lie, he nuked them, presumably killing all of them. And remember that in 2009, Finland had a population of 5.339 million. Finally, when Stan tried to cover for Randy's screw-up, Randy punished him for it. He also killed an alien who came because of his mistake and forced Stan to be the one to do it. All of this caused the Earth to be barred from the rest of the universe forever, with no chance that they could improve themselves and try again one day. Randy might have helped science, but he also permanently crippled them. We're trapped. Trapped with no escape. Banished. Disavowed. At least would say Tegrity Farms. It's spaced out, and Randy himself has gotten karma several times over. Like when he got arrested for blowing up the homegrown weed, or shot by the toilet paper companies for acting all high and mighty, or stuck in a boring nursing home because Stan could not take him anymore. This, all of this happened over the course of a single episode. Remember everything I said he did, and tell me this isn't the worst thing he's done. Anyhow, happy Boxing Day, Christmas, holiday, Kwanzaa, buy some great presents, be sure to get in some good licks, and bye!